Imagine, if you will, in the world of Ash and Tale, on the continent of Shill, in the lands to the south, there lies a beacon of righteousness. Its brilliance illuminates even the darkest hours, ceaselessly combating corruption and greed. However, deep beneath the earth, an insidious malevolence stirs, drawing the unwavering gaze of fate itself. It slumbers, biding its time until it emerges from the depths with a voracious hunger for light. Yet amidst this impending darkness, the gods of Ash and Tail remain vigilant, strategically maneuvering their pieces on the cosmic chessboard. Welcome back to Original GM. I am Hoopa Who. We're once again joined with Hawk, which you call him Wachi, and Sound Guy Push Go. No countdown. No, no countdown. Thanks for that. All right. It's all good. Getting started late this evening, so if you're going, all right. Let's How you guys doing? It. Everything good? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> talk about real life or anything like no, that? No, I don't so. want to talk about any of it. None of it. Nope. Let's cool. game. Fuck a bunch of bullshit. How about you, Hawk? Anything you want to say? Hey. Okay. <laughs> Can I roll my charisma to not go to prison? <laughs> we will see. We will see. And hopefully get my way at the same time. We're going to start with you guys that were still back at the um, Museum of Love and Beauty with all that that took place last week. Oh, jeez. Uh, they are filing people out of the building, and um, it's full of paladins and priests, and of course Pindar. And you guys have just left the uh, underground, the map or the mines, and had collected some stuff. And you guys remember what happened and everything. Just as a reminder, you have. The nature stone that was attached to that big stone yes. and you had come out nothing happened even though the druid told you something mm -hmm. might happen and not to come out of there so that's where we will start you guys are ready mm. yeah okay since we didn't get to um, Seth will go up to Ren and just put his, his forehead against her forehead and just say Sorry about all that's going on with this place. This that's awful. It's it's okay. She'll look at him and she'll say, um, it's okay. You know whatever the truth is, it'll come out and they'll see that. And I know what I did and didn't do. So I know. But I know what she meant to you I don't I can't I there's no way she did it. Not on her own. There's no way. There's something else going on. There has to be, right? Right. Zen will say, of course there is. She is the curator of a museum. No curator would ever gamble in this manner and lose their position. Yeah. Cause harm to all of their sisters. There's no brothers. way. I've known her since I was 12 years old. She's been the closest thing I've ever I've had to a mother since I came to Queensland. There's no way she did this. There's something else going on. There's a lot of something else that's going on. So. Yeah. They should probably look into some way to rescue her from whatever is taking place. That's what I'm saying. Like, does she need help? Maybe? I can surmise that this has something to do with the lower planes and perhaps I could gain some insight and answers but I would need some time. Be careful with that. Yeah. Of course. It's very dangerous. I wonder if she was like possessed or something. That is my thought. After that thing with her cat I'm not having any doubts with Dear, I'm sorry that took place. It's okay. If you'd I... like, I could try to look into that as well, but I can only ask so many questions, and the things that happen in the lower planes are where I will get my answers. I 
I'm not sure if that would include your cat or not, it's but okay. it could because it was someone I'm quite familiar with. Or at least the tales make me quite familiar it's with. It's so strange. I've had that cat since we were kids. But now come to think of it, that cat shouldn't be as healthy as it was. Not at that age. No, no. She should have been much older. I just never thought about it. If there's anything I can do for you, dear, I'm here. Thank you. Car is going around all the priests and seeing if anybody has the spell forgiveness. Um, there's just a few priests in here, but uh, you can ask around. Um, so. As you start asking, uh, there's like two priests that are presently in the room that you're in, and neither one of them can do it. Um, they look over at Pendar, and Pendar is like, well, we can get it done. I will send for a priest. She just kind of nods over at Seth, and he's the one that needs it. Very well. <clears throat> Someone is on their way. Thank you. Yes. He leaves and goes upstairs um, with a couple other paladins and another and one of the two priests that were down there. They kind of go up the stairs. So what now? I wonder. Car will come over and let you know that somebody's coming to take care. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Gavor will say, I, I do have the box of stones still. Okay. Um, if we would like to try to do something with those, I'm not sure now what you can do. Yeah, I don't think here would be the best option. Um, of course. I kind of have, she has a general idea of what they're worth, right? With her she, fencing ability? She knows they're worth millions. Okay. Yeah. She would say, um... Millions of, of silver. I kind of have an understanding of what they're worth, so... I wonder if because of what they are, we could go to that magic shop, maybe? Mm, that could be a good idea. Seth did mention that he was Wanted looking to go for there, something. Yeah. That could be an option. Okay. Most assuredly. Are we allowed to leave? They did not tell us not to. Captain Viceroy looks over at Eden and he says, We have been ordered to stay here until this is all taken care of. But that order did not come for you, just us. <clears throat> but we will be here until we are released. I will most definitely let you guys know once you're released. If we need your help. He nods. Kit walks over to <clears throat> you guys and she's like, uh, where's, where's Dell and Timmy? Ryan would say, um, they, they were actually with, uh, he was, no, um, Pendar. Last time I saw them, I don't know where they went, actually. Pendar was just here. I thought they were. She'll telepathy doll. Okay. Doll. You you hear? Hey, where are you? <clears throat> uh, standing in front of the council with Pendar. With Pendar? Mm -hmm. Oh shit. So either the Pendar that's with you or the Pendar that's with me is not Pendar. He just went upstairs. She'll look at them and be like, she says Pendar's with her, guys. Um, it was Seth, by the way. 
Perhaps you should telepathy the Pendar. She will. She'll telepathy the Pendar. One moment. I'm with the council. There's somebody here pretending to be you. A Pendar. He just went upstairs. Help will be there shortly. That's what her Delara heart. Her heart. Telepathy <laughs> Pendar. Okay. Pendar? Yes. Where are you? Right in front of you. There's somebody calling themselves Pendar with... Um, yes, Brian. I'm aware. <clears throat> Pendar would say, you need to leave. Get out of the museum. He said, let's leave, guys. We're out. Hmm. Okay. A whole party. <laughs> I do believe the council is going to request your presence very soon. Oh. Meanwhile, in the council chambers. They leave, just as an awareness. They walk out the door. You guys leave? <laughs> yes. Okay. Straight to the cradle. You guys are going to the cradle? Yes. Okay. You start heading that direction with everybody. Um, in the council chambers, you're, you're standing there, and they have ordered for your father to be brought in. They're sitting there waiting, and, uh, and, um, in walks in this very beautiful woman, uh, Friss, Friss, you've seen Friss before, she's one of the companions, and Mary Ann, who is with her, and they come in, and, um, of course, Mary Ann had told you earlier not, you know, to let her know, so, but Friss comes in with Mary Ann, and they hug, and, everything in the council you can see they're kind of talking between themselves they're not really looking at you and Pindar and he's just kind of standing there after what he's just said to all of them and they're discussing things back and forth looks like there might be some telepathy going on and stuff like that um, Elis stands up and uh, comes over to you guys and he says you're dull right Delara. Well, I just want you to know, Delara, that uh, Nerva would never have done the things she's being accused of. Something very grave has happened. She's either been killed and replaced, or somehow she's been compromised. I've known Nerva for a long time, and she would never have committed the atrocities that were committed. Thank you for the information that you brought to the council. Well, I think that uh, we would request for your group to uh, please come to the council so that we can finish up the details of what is taking place. We believe you have uh, surmised who is responsible and uh, we need to discuss your success and your future endeavors. That's Naz says that. Hila smiles at you and goes back and sits down. Okay. You guys just stepped out. You're getting ready to head to the cradle. He said they want to talk to all of us together about our success and our future endeavors. 
And also your friend Marianne said to tell you that she's sorry and she loves you and she didn't mean any of it. Is she there? Yeah. Okay. Come on, Ellen. All right. So you guys head to the council yeah. headquarters? Yep. All right. Um, you guys walk in. Uh, as you walk in, Chris and Marianne are there. You guys come in, and Mary, Marianne comes over and gives you a hug. She'll hug her. She says, please forgive She'll me. She'll hug her really tight. She hugs you real tight. She says, please forgive me. I'm sorry. It's okay, sweetie. It's okay. You were super upset and traumatized, and you thought it was me. I understand. I did. I'm so glad it wasn't you, though. She'll look her in the eyes and be like, you know I would never do anything like that, right? I, I do. I, I do. I do, too, and I'm worried about her. There's no way she did this. She kind of turns and looks back, and you see Friss, Friss standing there. She'll look at both of them and be like, we know her, but there's no way that this was her. There's something amiss here. Of course. You see Friss, and she says, of course. We are doing all that we can to figure out exactly what's going on. Yes. She'll pull back from Marianne and squeeze her hand. She'll turn to face the council. Okay, the you guys all come in, and uh, Pindar's there, of course, and uh, the council's there, and they say, Welcome, welcome. And uh, Naz says, Here in a moment, we will have uh, your father brought in. Oh, well, it, it seems, and he turns, and you see your dad, uh, Dorman. This is him right here. He walks in with. A familiar face that you guys have seen a time or two. The leopard. Cat kind. And uh, your father, as soon as he sees you, he smiles real big and kind of looks at the council and uh, Ness says, please come before us. And he does. He moves him at the end of the table. right here. All right, you guys embrace, and he just holds you and says, so good to see you. So good to see you. Let me look at you. Uh, this guy is following him uh, uh, that you, you know, you've seen before. Bloodthorn. And um, he seems to be, like, guarding him or in charge of him or something. He stands pretty close to you guys. And uh, he just, he says, how have you been? He says, I missed you so much. How is your mother? You've grown up. You. You, you, you've, you've grown up. You're <laughs> A decade has changed you. Uh, you see Timmy standing behind you. He comes up and stands behind you. And he kind of looks at Timmy, and for a second he looks confused, and then he kind of looks back at you, and he's like, This is my new elder brother. He's been my family for the last 10 years. He turns and looks at Timmy. Timmy, it is a pleasure to meet you. Uh, if you are that close to my daughter, then you are family. Timmy's like, he nods, doesn't really say anything. <clears throat> Galen does that. He's like, uh, please, uh, please come before us, uh, Dorman. I know it has been many years since you have seen your daughter. He goes, thank you, Councilman. And he comes over here and stands right here. We have some questions, and we have been looking at your case and what has taken place. I guess the question is, are you going to talk now? Are you still going to stay silent? And you see him kind of look down for a second. Like, <sighs> kind of looks up and he looks through the council and he's like, The whole telepathy him. Can okay. you tell them everything? He does that. Please, there's been much corruption. 
Many people are gone. Tell the truth so that you can leave here with me. He seems to start to shake a little bit. He's like, as I said before, um, I have been ordered not to speak about it, but it seems that that order has come from a missing council member. You see them all kind of turn and look at each other. And Naz says, well, we are quite aware of Nerva's treachery, and we do not know if she has done this by herself or if she is an accomplice. You see him kind of frown a little bit, and he's like, Nerva? And then he looks, oh, I did not notice she wasn't here. You see them all kind of look at each other. Then who exactly are you speaking about, if that is not the council member that you're concerned with? You see him kind of look down again, nervous, like you can see he's vis visibly shaken. I will tell you what I told you before. I'm not sure if I can tell you any more than that. Well, it would seem that regardless of what you say, by the information that we have collected, you will be a free man by the end of this meeting, if that helps. You seem kind of like, and he smiles and he turns and looks at you. And he doesn't look like abused or untaken care of, like he looks fine look like he's been like in prison it doesn't like the prison must be pretty good because he's not he doesn't look any worse for wear older you know obviously 10 years older than he was but um he doesn't look bad by any means pindar says dorman can you nod your head if we speak things to you. Can you answer in that manner? He kind of frowns a little bit. He goes, first I will ask you, was it a druid that requested that you create this item, this invention? You see him kind of look down and then he looks at the council. And he nods. And he goes, mm. he turns and looks back at the council. And what exactly did she commission you to create? I mean, we all are aware, but what is it that you were working on? Lords, ladies, I, as before, I gave my word. It is not for me to break that word, even if asked by the council, it I do believe it is for the greater good of Shill that I stay silent on this subject. Seth raises his hand. Council kind of looks over, you know, some of them. And Naz goes, yes, what is it? Mr. Quill, would it by chance have been a large crystal? Or a machine? Or both? I did create it, a rather large nature crystal, yes. And I did create a machine that would produce uh, a smoke that was affiliated, affiliated with the uh, nature stone itself. But I, I, that's not what this is about. So the council all kind of look. Ah, well then you can tell us about the the nature stone you created. He kind of frowns for a second. He goes, you mean the large one? And he says, yes, yes. Was well, it the room size stone or the little the stone about, well, about yay big? You seem to look away from you when you say that. Because we found two of them. One that's like great big and we also found one, yeah, about you big. He nods. What 
did they do? Well, the large nature stone that I created connected to what was already present underneath Queensland. Mm -hmm. And it enabled a connection to the druidic magic that is under Queensland. Ren, well, telepathy, uh, Gavor. Mm -hmm. so can you read him? Yes, he is telling the truth. He is very nervous, and he is thinking about the stone that you possess. That is what he does not want to speak on. What does the smaller stone do? I'm not sure what you mean. He is lying says to Ren. And then he says it to Seth in your head. He is lying. He knows exactly what that stone is. He is thinking that it was made for Nerva. That is what he believes. And it, it was made to help protect her, to seal her in from someone, a form of protection that not only could someone not get in, but someone not could not get out with, them, with it. Hmm. It is a way to put a bubble around an area. An unbreakable bubble, Down with there. the stone being the only key to unlock it. Down there or somewhere else? For Nerva is what he believes. Okay. To Quill, Seth will ask, is there a way to destroy that large crystal? Uh, yes. Easily? Yes. Lower planar magic or warlock energy would destroy it, or could. What about those little ones in the pond? They're all part of it. So if we destroy the big one, the little ones will go? Yes. What about the plants? We fought a plant that made imitations of us, and there's little versions of it. I don't know anything about that. Okay. Gavor says, he is telling the truth. He knows nothing about that. Huh. I was commissioned to do something for the greater of Shill. I was asked to keep quiet on this and not speak on it. That if I was to speak on it, that Queensland itself could fall. There is a chance that what I was told is a lie, I suppose. He'll look over at the at Ren and Delara. What was that big cat thing called? That building? Where all those people were. The Sphinx? That. Do you know anything about that Sphinx? Randall telepathy of war and be like, we need, we need to... I know what a sphinx is, but <laughs> no, I have not heard of any sphinx. Cook telepathy of war and what? Tell him we need to share that with them, but I don't know. We don't know if there's anybody else who's corrupt. We need no, to tell we them don't. what we just learned, though, some, someone. There could be another member within this council that is corrupt. There could. And they would probably want this individual dead that's standing in front of us. Yeah, they would. So he needs to be protected. Mm-hmm. Which I don't know if anybody noticed, but when I came in, I released both of my peace stones. Gavor says, 
It seems that he was hired by Marina, but his belief is that he was protecting or helping to protect Nerva. And you see him kind of look back at Gavor like, what? When he says fuck? that, Ren is going to fucking psychoanalyze the council and their reactions. All right. Don't need to make a roll for each roll one. Roll a perception or a observation haft and roll under your escort. I did not make my observation, not half. Okay. Escort. Yes. Elis and Hookleaf look at each other when he says that. That's all you see. They're like... And they don't, like, noticeably look at each other. They just kind of... Almost like they already knew that. He believes that he created the Nature Stone... The small one for her, and it is attached and has everything to do with what is going on. It will seal an individual within a structure or a building or around their whole body and prevent them from being harmed, but it will not allow them to escape it once it has been invoked, except by the stone itself. You see the council all kind of look at each other. He just kind of frowns for a second and he's like he looks over at Ren and Telepathy's too you are in danger if you have that in your possession right now great great danger do not pull it out do not show that you have that well, if that's the case, then I suppose we should acquire that stone back. And he looks over at everyone at the party. We should talk to you. What do I do? You tell him you gave it to me. Okay. Do you have it? She'll nod at Elis. She doesn't say it. The stone was given to me, he says, to Naz. And he's like, oh, well, very well. We need to try to figure out why that stone is, was made, uh, and what it has to do with all of this. It's important that we take care of this within the council. And he looks at the other council members. Sorry, Galarsimus, let's see. Okay. My dad just told us why it was created. He's asking questions that have already been answered, Pindar. My dad just told us why the stone was created. He wants the stone to find out why it was created. Well, he's probably looking for more details on the stone. It's The council will often ask questions they already know the answer to to get reactions out of us. <clears throat> I trust Nas, just so you know. I'm sorry, I don't trust any of them anymore. I don't blame you. So are we saying that the Vixen perhaps is not responsible for this? Admiral Rixer says. Nas says, obviously there is something amiss, and that is why we need the stone. Elis, if you would. And he says, I don't have it. Well, isn't that quaint, Elis? He nods. I would dare say that we need to come to a vote. Uh, we would like the possession of that stone uh, immediately. All for the stone being given to the council, say I. Um, Hookleaf does not say I. Elis does not say I. Uh, and that's it. The rest of them say I. And he goes, and those that say nay, and he looks over at them, and they both raise their hand, and he goes, well, you have been outvoted. Nobody noticed Seth raising his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Elis says, 
Eh, hi, Inquisitor. I, uh, I would hate to have to request a vote by the monarch as well. We all know that our vote is merely 50% and that the monarch is the other 50%. And I know we don't want to get them involved with this in any way, do we? You see Naz kind of narrow his eyes and look at Elis. He's like, of course not. You are quite aware of that. We, we need not involve the royal house in this matter. Well, I think maybe we do. If you're requesting the stone, then perhaps we should. You see Bloodthorn move this way, and Elis kind of turns and looks at him, and Bloodthorn goes like that with his finger, and Elis is like this. Bloodthorn grabs him and picks him up and starts handcuffing him. Elis? Yeah. What? He's like, until the stone is brought to us, you will be under arrest. Uh, you are keeping matters from the council. And that is not good. You are hiding something, and we suspect that you know more than you are telling us. And as for your brother, and he turns and looks at Hookleaf, Hookleaf goes, I vote no for the same reason. This stone should stay hidden right now. Trust me when I say this, if it comes out, it will be detrimental to good in general. Well, that remains to be seen, uh, Hookleaf, but if your brother will not give the stone, then he will go to prison until he brings it. You raise your hand. That's Seth. Uh, All right. By the way, he was nodding when he yeah. said, when Hookleaf said what he said, but then he raises his hand. Naz kind of looks, some of the council look at you and then look away like they don't care, and Naz kind of looks at you and he goes, Yes, what is it? How's he going to bring it to you if he's in jail? Well, he's going to have it on him presently right now. And if he has placed it or hidden it somewhere, he will stay locked up until he tells us where it is. Mm. This matter does not concern you, young one. Uh, if, it, if it does, I will let you know. But, Elis, you go to prison until you are prepared to release the information that the council's requested. Um, his brother says, um, you know, Hookleaf says, you know, uh, I've been thinking about going to the monarch and meeting the new prince and princesses for a couple days now. I wanted to give them a little air to breathe. You see Naz kind of look worried when he says that. He goes, well, you know, we must follow the law. Uh, to get the monarch involved would be quite difficult for this whole council and perhaps for the city itself um, I'm not sure that is a good idea Hookleaf and he says well arresting my brother is probably the worst thing you could do right now <clears throat> Bloodthorn starts to take Elis out of this room the direction that he brought Dorman in and uh Naz says, well, whatever your belief is, your brother is going to prison until he releases the information or we acquire the stone from him. Uh, I suspect you are perhaps involved in this as well, but we have nothing to prove that. Uh, Elis has requested that he be put in prison simply by not bringing it forward. And he's walking out and Elis telepathies to Wren. Mm -hmm. He says, you need to get out of here. You need to get out of here. She'll step Don't up. do it immediately. Do it slowly. Do it in the best way you could possibly do it before they start looking. She'll step up behind Pandar. Okay. I believe you can probably find it. Can you not, Galen? And Galen says, yes, I perhaps can. He stands up and kind of holds his staff in front of him and closes his eyes and you see it glow this white color. Tell Pandar, can you get us out of here? We can't leave now. They 
glows and goes throughout the whole room and then calms back down and he says, it is not here. Well, then perhaps we should start searching out of here. Don't you think, Galen? And he's like, yes. I will see what I can do. Galen, uh, will get up. She is using her companion training to stay okay. centered and calm. Go ahead and roll it. Yeah. He gets up and goes uh, this way. Yeah. One above a critical success with her proficiency. It's un- it's it's above a critical success. Uh, he leaves. He doesn't seem to look at you or anything, so he's not, not aware of that you have it currently, evidently. And, uh, of course, Elis gets taken out. As far as you all go, you have succeeded in your mission above and beyond what we have asked for you to do. You have not only uncovered the corruption, but you have given us names. And it would seem that you have succeeded. Therefore, I request that we find a new duty for this group. And from our earlier conversations, I do believe that they could be used in the coming war. You see the council kind of nod. Therefore, uh, it seems that you all agree with me. You will report to Rhodes Inn, to General Rava, or the princess, as many of us call her, but she does not like that word. So general would probably be the best way to address her. You will report to the front lines and to General Rava, uh, who has requested a group that is capable of perhaps finding some information that they are in need of. So you will gather yourselves and you will Pindar, can you uh, take care of this matter for us? He nods. Yeah, I'd be glad to. I'd be glad to. Reva is right outside of the city of Rhodes End. It is the most southern city uh, or southeastern city of the Danatarium. It is where the war has started. Currently they are there Yes, that will be where you report to. I'm not quite sure what it is that she needs, but I'm quite sure that you will succeed in whatever it is. And he stands up. You see the rest of the council all stand up. Pendar kind of turns and looks at you guys. And he goes, and as far as you, uh, Dorman, you may leave. You are a free man. He goes over to Dahl and just hugs her and uh, starts heading out as quickly as he is. His little legs will take him. And... So does, so does Pindar. He, uh, I don't know if any of the council hears him, but uh, Seth says, that's a good way to get rid of us. Send us to war. That's exactly what I was thinking. She was going to telepathy that to Pindar and the whole group. Oh, actually. he doesn't he cover says it up. It he loud. says it out loud. Pindar I'm says, Reynolds. let's Talk just... Shut up. Let's just leave. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Delara's going to get catch up to her dad. They're taking us right to the monarch. Uh, yeah. Eden... Your father looks at you, and he nods, and then he telepathies in your head. You finally get to meet the princess, and be at your best behavior. Yes, sir. I'm sorry this is the way that it has to be, but I know that you will make me proud. And tell her, keep the stone hidden. Right? <laughs> she doesn't react like that. Holy shit, that's her on the inside. She's like, what? Mm-hmm. All right, so you guys find your way out. Delara's going to catch up with her dad. He's right there with you. He 
he's holding your hand. Um, she's going to pull out that platinum candlestick. Okay. And give it to him. What is this? This is because mom sold and got rid of everything that we owned to get you out of there. This is payment for part of, anyway, it's mine. It's legal. It was payment for the job we just did. I want you to get rid of it, and I want your mom to get out of Queens. I don't think she's so using out of Queen, Queens. Leave the city with a war going on. Who are we going to war against? The Danitarian. I heard Gold Star is back. Is that true? Are they so, saying all this out loud? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Whispering it. To yeah. <coughs> the corruption is deep, and I don't believe that it's gone. And I just don't want something else to happen in Vegas. I can tell you that those that hired me were scared. Can Ren you? roll under her hear noise to hear what they're saying? You can. Is there what's trying? Hey, doll. Mm -hmm. Seth slipped you a platinum bar. One of the ones that the dwarf gave gave us. Yeah. He just slips one of those yeah. into your hand you hear it. and just kind of nods at your dad. Sweet. Thank you, Seth. Mm -hmm. You guys uh, come out of the front of the council chamber and you're going to stop right there. Rava. For Sorry. those of you that know who Reva is, you're probably excited to hear what's going on. So you have requested to your mother that you become the general of the army of Queensland in the coming war against the Danitarian. Yes. You have asked Vaman Sith, your brother, the prince, the emperor of the north, if you can create ten positive material vampires. Okay. Knowing quite well that that's against my compulsion. One out of ten of them will perish. Or no, nine out of ten of them will perish, and yeah. one out of ten will survive the process. Yeah. There's only a ten percent chance. And you've gone through that process to okay. do that because he has allowed you to go against your compulsion to create ten of them. Okay. The odds were in your favor. Only 51 People died. Hmm. And you were able to create 10. Nice. You know that his request was that he had to be able to com compel each and every one of them as well. Okay. And of course. Uh, you were, were also about. told that you could make no more, just 10. Okay. Um, the best one out of them all, the wisest smartest, the strongest, the most dexterous, the most healthy one out of them all was General Hazen. Okay. He uh, pretty much becomes your right hand in the coming war. All right. But you have control of all of them. You know that the monarch, your, your mother and your father and all of them are following Gold Star's wishes in the attempt to rid Shill of evil. And to make the presence of law and goodness stronger within the world. Okay. Danitarium is the first culprits of this law and goodness. The main reasons behind this, you stand behind 100%. And that is the slavery that is, is within the Danitarium. She finally gets to go after them. Yeah. <laughs> and so they request you've requested that. It's all been done. So for the last week or so, you have... There have been troop movements. You've been taking care of all this kind of stuff. And you've been told that you will be the tip of the spear at Road's End. Okay. Um, you're excited, y'all, that stuff and everything. And you're getting ready to leave and Vey comes in. Um, he walks in and you see his chest plate. is solid vibranium. And it's carved intricately with angels rising up. It's all angels rising up, and your your armor is angels following, so it 
kind of looks cool, but it's vibranium. It's vibram. It's like your shield. His whole yeah. chest plate, impenetrable. And he just kind of walks up and puffs his chest out. He's like, hey. What's up, big bro? What's up? He looks at your shield and then. She's not even gonna acknowledge it. <laughs> She's not even gonna acknowledge it. What's been going on? Getting ready for the war. I was the told. What you been up to? I was told to come talk to you by Mama. What do you think? Nice. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Want we'll to steak now? Exactly. <laughs> a gift from Eris. Of course it was. Yeah. You were right. She's good for me. Absolutely, all the way around. So here's the deal. I know you're all what gung ho, want? huh? What does Mom want? What? She wants me to talk to you. So here's the what? thing. I know you're all fucking gung ho, and you're gonna go over to the Danitarium and start killing a bunch of people. You're going to go try to fucking take their leaders on no matter what the army's doing. Da, da, da. Mother said to tell you that this is a message to the world. And that for the princess to go in there and just start killing leaders and stuff, not only could it be detrimental to your health, from what I've discovered, there are some pretty dangerous individuals in the Danitarium. There are a lot, and I'm sure you'll be able to look over the intel and figure it out yourself. And in the meantime, you should know that uh, Mother has requested for you to allow the troops to do their job. Allow the war to continue. Don't go running in there with your horse's ass and try to kill them because it may backfire on you. And not only that, it'll give a presence to Queensland that they don't want. You and I can do things that they can't do. So, okay. use your generals, use your troops. Okay. Do what Mother wants you to do. All right. But you should also know something else, something that is behind all this. The reason I allowed you to have ten well, thralls I'm sure you under had your reasons. What is it? Jamal. Jamal. He imprisoned Gordon and Zira in the Temple of Loving Madness. It crashed just north of Queensland. They are there and trapped and they cannot get out. Some magical energy is yeah. around the whole ship. And they can't Jamal escape. Did that? Jamal did it. Oh boy. Does Lily know yet? I don't know why. No, I haven't told her. She's pregnant. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I don't wanna. Nobody told me. Anyway. I gave my word. I have a pact with Zira. I remember. And I owe her one, so I have to get them out. So far, I've not been successful. Whatever this is, it's impenetrable. Nothing's impenetrable. He you looks at your shield. He looks at your shield, and he's like, "I suppose that's true." As he looks at it, and the fractal pieces mm -hmm. on the bottom that cut the out. Yeah. yeah. So she believes. That Jamal did it for gold stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you say that like it's not the truth? Because it's not. Why do you do it? The big A. Jamal's working for him? Really? Whether it be against his will or not, I do not know. But I don't know where he's at. I know he's somewhere in the Danitarium, but I don't know where. Okay. But the Danitarium will give him up eventually. We have put out bounties for him. The armies all are... Talk about talking to Remy? Well... Remy probably knows where he is. Maybe <laughs> you should contact him. Maybe I should.
I suppose you're needed at Road's End. I sure. think that's the first assault. Yeah. Troops are already there, probably waiting for you. Take you and your little. He looks over at General Hazen, who's standing off to the side. Take you and your little boy toy and get to where you're supposed to be and let us know any information that you find. Right. In the meantime, I will try to free Gordon and Zira. So far, I've not been. I haven't been successful so far. There's always a way. I'll find it if there is. Give him hell. She smiles. She smiles. Turns and walks out. So, Reva. Yeah. What do you... destroy my people and you don't expect me to not treat you in the fashion that I am? I'm only going to destroy the ones who deserve it, Remy. The ones who are putting people in slavery. The ones who are destroying lives. There are innocent people here at Road's End. And it is my city now. And I know you're coming. Your troops are surrounding my walls right now as we speak. And you expect me to be nice to you? There are innocents here, Reva. You've lost your damn mind. He said he's at Road's End. That's yeah. what he just said. He said it's his city, is yeah. what he tells you. I will not allow you to kill my father or my mother or these people. I have no desire to kill your father or mother. I'm not just going to kill innocent people. That's not true. That's not true. That's your number one mandate is to find my father. No. I will stand against you. You see his vision in your head of what he looks like now. I will not allow you to kill these innocent people. And I will not allow you to stop our traditions. If your traditions are slavery, maybe they deserve to be destroyed, Remy. Some Seriously? Of, some of them are, but that is not my doing. Nor, nor these people. Is it going on in your city? Rhodes Inn does not have any slavery. In the fashion that you would consider slavery. The people here that are servants and slaves want to be, and their lives are good. They're taken care of. That's fine. I don't want to liberate somebody who doesn't want to be liberated. Maybe we can talk about this. We've been friends since we were children. Do you really think you couldn't just talk to me? The intel that I have gathered and what we have been told is that you're not going to stop with the Danitarium. Your law and goodness is going to attempt to spread all the way to the north, even. You're going to take over the whole fucking continent. You think we're going to let you do that? You should talk to your people. And let them know that what they are doing is wrong. You can't come in here with your religion and tell us how to live. Remy, I have no religion. Fuck the gods. You know how I feel. Then why this are you following him? Talking to you. Because the slavery deserves to be abolished. The abusement of women. Do you not remember when we were kids? Coming back from Monarch, the slaves? All of the things that we saw, you expect me to just sit back and let that happen? You're going to try to change thousands of years of tradition and spirituality and religion and a way of living overnight? No, it'll take some time. But yeah, it's wrong. Listen, if you want to come and you want to talk about this, we can talk about it. Or, I don't want to have to be the one that kills you, Remy. Don't make me do that. Here comes the threat. It's not a threat. I'm letting you know that if we don't come to some kind of understanding, there's nothing I can do to stop this. 
I don't think there's anything you can do to stop it. I think you're going to bring your people, whether you lead them or not. The Gold Star is going to try to spread his light all across this fucking land, including the Danitarium and the North and the Barbarians. And your brother's there, too. Do they know how evil you two are? You're talking to me about evil? You ride a fucking vulgar ass unicorn and I'm supposed to be the one that's evil? You forget, I fought to kill your kind. My dad did not do anything wrong. And I would stand behind my family even if that means that I must kill you. So I suppose our talking will be on the battlefield, won't it? She'll disconnect from him. Okay. And she fucking flips out. Okay. She starts flipping tables, screaming. You, you, you know <coughs> I the do. Yeah. 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 Flips the fuck out. Just. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. General Hayson's just standing there and he's just watching you. Collect yourself. He kind of looks aggressive and you can, you know it's because he can feel mm -hmm. what you're feeling. Mad. Yeah. Mad as fuck. So, from what he said, did he try to make it sound like his, his parents were there? Did he slip up at all? No. No? Not necessarily. He didn't say anything that, you know... He said, I will protect my parents, though. He did. My family, didn't he? He did. Okay. So, she'll tell Fee Bay and tell him they might be at Road's End. I don't know, but I know that Remy's ruling the city, and he says he'll protect his parents. So, if I find him, I'll let you know. Okay. Be safe. Yep. You go to Road's Inn? Yep. Okay. All right, back to you guys. You walk out the council chambers. Mandates do not kill any innocents. Huh? No innocents. Women, children. What know? do you mean? And Rhodes Inn. Kill any innocents. So, when you get to Rhodes Inn and you get your, your orders, when you look at them, that's not what it says. Mm. When you okay. get there, it is... Destroy any combatants and seek to destroy any religious affiliation Got you. or traditions, Goodness. as well as capture and arrest anyone that you can. Okay. If they fight, they're to die with no mercy. If they don't fight, they're to be captured. And arrested. And arrested. All right. No matter who they are. Women, children, doesn't matter. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> that rubs me the wrong way. But this is Rava, so I'm just going to let that go. Okay. All right. Back to you guys. You guys just just walk out. Delaro will go ahead and she will hand her dad the candelabra, the platinum candelabra and the platinum bar. Kind of tucks him away. He's like, I, I can't make that decision until I talk to your mom, but um, this will help. If, regardless, whatever we end up doing, I. Please just don't trust anyone. He kind of walks away from everybody. He goes out about 30 feet or so, <laughs> and he looks at you and he says in a whispered tone, he kneels in real close to you, I still have my research. Just hide. He was somebody within the Red Lantern that they were scared of, that Nerva was scared of. That Marina was scared of. I can't tell them anything, but you can. There was someone there they were scared of. Whoever that is. 
this, I cannot imagine the power level that they possess because the two of them, she's the druid of the old faith. She's the most powerful druid in the South and she was scared. Whomever this was they met with at the Red Lantern, the Tavern and Inn, you may find some answers there. Not the nature stone that Clara gave her, but the other telepathy stone. The divinity stone? The divinity stone okay. and give it to Quentin. Okay. This will allow us to telepathy. This will allow you to telepathy to me. Um, of course. So we can stay in touch. You guys just stay hidden. Don't talk. Search if we leave. That can't fall in the wrong hands. Where is it? Within a stone. A nature stone. There's two of them hidden. Okay. He leans in real close to you and he says, The village of form. There's a ruin. There will be clues. You will find them. Village of Thorn? Thorn. Thorn. P-H-O-R-N. Yeah. Within those stones are my research. They can only be accessed through the knowledge that I possess. There is... I dare not tell you. I don't want you to access them if you find them. And there, that information will be, if anyone finds out that you have those stones or know that information, your life will be in great danger, as much danger as the other one. And the other one, I tell you, is a stone that will, there is no way to break it. It's magic. It's dark. Druidic in nature. I do believe they used it somehow, but I don't know how. If if the large stone within the mines is there and it's working, that means they've invoked it. The closer you get to where they used it, the brighter and more powerful it will become. Yes, it will pulsate the energy from the large stone, but when you move closer to wherever it was that they used it, it'll just be bright. It'll glow really bright. And that will show where... That will let you know where they used it. And maybe where they used it is where they are. Yeah. Maybe... Nerva and Marina are hiding. Stone will guide you if, if you can find it. Just stay here. I will let you know. He says in your head. This is how this works. Perfect. Thank you. I must get to your mother. He kisses you on the cheek and gives you a big hug. And then he looks at Timmy and goes, You are welcome in our home. And Timmy's like, Yeah, I've already been there. <laughs> he kind of smiles. Well, kind of. I've been to the shop at the Quill. And he's like, Yes, but our home, you're welcome. And he goes, You don't, ha you don't have a home anymore. And he's like, There's no home. I told you mom sold everything. Should have never done any of this, but it's for the... I do believe it was for the good of show. I do. I could be wrong, but I do believe it is. But now I wish that you would just forget about it and go home and hide and take care of her. Okay. I 
still don't believe that you're safe. That's why I want you guys to leave and go home. Okay, I'll let you know what happens. I'll go talk to your mother. I think that probably if you go to get that information, there you're going to be being watched and they're going to try to kill you. I won't go to get the stones. Maybe, maybe you can, but I won't. I love you. And he gives you another hug and a kiss. And he hurries on through the city. You guys are in Upper Queen. We're going to take a quick break right there. And we will be right back. And we are back. <laughs> All right. So you guys are going to make your way to the, the cradle. Shop. To the magic shop. To the cradle. Yes. You guys make your way there and you come inside. Um, the, the girl that you recognized as Bella mm -hmm. is sitting behind the desk when you guys walk in. Brian will walk up to the desk. You see the monkey there, kind of looks at you, and the cats are all around. They all come up and say hello. Say hello to all of them. Okay. I'm gonna walk 
Okay. Seth, the they come up to you too, and Pindar's with you because you tell Pindar you guys want to go to the magic shop. He's like, "That's fine. Let's hurry. Uh, I got to meet with somebody there anyway." So you guys walk in. Uh, Bella's like, "Hi." Hey. So she is using her charisma. All right. And her skills. All right. Her skills. Um, you said we leveled up, didn't we? Oh, yes, you guys did level up. Oh, that's right. We forgot to roll hit points. Roll your hit points. Those of you that did level, do you, you remember? Did rended, you rended, even did not. Okay. Cara did. Nice. did. And I believe you didn't. Oh, that's right, because I didn't, because I went to 3,500 hit points. Yeah, so, experience. Yeah, so the two of you did go ahead and roll your hit points. So I need another 500. Oh, wait. So if it's an odd number, do I run up or down? For splitting in half for multi-class. Up. Up. You know, I've played D&D for so long, and uh, I'm still forgetting to add con. Yeah. So the first roll you make, if you want to keep it, that's fine. If not, you can roll again, but you have to keep whatever it is you roll the second time. Would you roll? You rolled an eight. Rolled an eight. Nice. Ren now has eighteen points. Nice. Six. Okay. So you guys are at the cradle. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that to you. Um, as you're standing there, uh, Pindar. will message, will telepathy to Kara. Mm -hmm. It'll say uh, that priest showed up, but we were not there. So we'll take care of it when we can um, okay. with Seth. Yeah, from what he was saying at the council meeting, he yeah. really needs to be fixed. Yeah, I don't know. Well, we'll see. And for Seth, he, is that eye patch still there? So, yeah, you guys are there, so you have to ask. Ren will walk up to the counter yeah. where Bella is. Yeah. Using her charisma, oozing charisma. Right. Um. <laughs> oozing? Yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> and she'll say, she'll say, hello. Hey, how are you guys? We're good, we're good. Monkey does. Little guy. Sure what can I help you guys? Baby. What can I help you guys with? Um, so it's gonna play with the cats. Okay. So we have recently come across some things, and I happen to know they're worth a lot, but we have nowhere to. Not that we don't have anywhere, but we figured this would be the best place because the nature of what it is. Okay. To bring. What you got? Um, you one of the stones? Hmm. She'll set it on the desk, watching for her visible reaction when she sets it down. She looks at it and smiles. Um, and that's not the only one. Okay. Um, can you guys give me a moment? Mm -hmm. She gets up from behind the Is desk. Is it obvious that she's like, what the fuck? No, she, no, she, she, she holds keeps it together, it together pretty well. She walks out of the room and goes uh, over to this arch doorway over here and disappears for a little bit. She'll get it. And how many do you want to get rid of right now and how many do you want to hold on to? The voice says, well, I can make them all appear only. I cannot do one at a time. Oh, okay. Should I do that now or? Bring out the chest. He nods and looks down to the ground and holds his hand out and you see the chest appear. You okay? Yes. Good. I don't have to concentrate on that anymore. Seth, can you put it up on the desk? Mm-hmm. Pick it up, put it up on the chest. Or up on the desk. Okay. I don't even know how many's in there. Lily? Yes. You are sitting um, in your back room. And uh, you 
back there with Gorgain. Bella comes in. Um, Hi, love. That kid that you gave the necklace to? Yeah. Him and his group are here, and they want to sell us Vulcanite. A lot of it. Oh, all right. Let's get, let's, let's do it. I guess. It looks legit. Perfect. I've been wanting some more Vulcanite for a long time. Carcane raised an eyebrow. He's like, Vulcanite. Oh, I know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's dangerous. Yeah. It's dangerous. We're really hopeful. Kind of looks over at your belly. It's like if it exploded, there could be a lot of damage. <laughs> oh, cast it. Well, they should probably know that, too. <laughs> we'll go out. Okay. He goes out in front of you. And, uh, comes into the room. You guys see this big park variant come in. Looks around at you guys. Well, greetings, Ren. You so, guys, you guys okay. see the lily. They've got a chest sitting up here that the monkey's looking at. He's like... We got some, hey. uh, some treasures for you. She'll smile at her. I'll go up to the chest. Okay. How have you guys been? Staying out of trouble? Nope. That's that uh, playing with the cats. You see Pendar there with him. He's kind of smiling at you. Hi, um, Pendar. He nods. As he's as he's there, he kind of turns and walks towards the door as you start doing your dealings. And, uh, you see Clip come in the front door and start talking to Pendar. He he nods at you. He's like, Hi, Clip. And they start talking. She will open the box. It's an elf. Little elf guy with a big bow. Okay. Uh, you open the box and it's full of Vulcanite uh, stones. They're they're raw. Um, they look like you know, they were mined recently. Yeah, go ahead and roll it. Yes. So there are eighty stones in there roughly. About 80 million gold pieces that you're looking at. You look down at this thing. Ren's just looking at you, smiling. Nice. And what would it go for in the black market? First of all, are they Pro stolen? Or are they legit? You don't know. Um, go ahead and roll your observation on the chest and stuff like that. Yes. The Mines of Queensland. It's a chest from the Mines of Queensland. Um, you remember Admiral Brixer had invited you down there because they had found something. You don't know if this is what it is and they've stolen it or what. Black market, it would be about 40 million gold for this chest of Vulcanite. She asked where they got it. Yeah, is this uh, legit or was this payment for a job? Or? So this was, um, we did some work for the council down in the mines. Mm -hmm. And this was part of our payment. Okay. We were basically allowed to keep what we found. It okay. seems like she's telling the truth, but you know that if the council found this, they would keep it. You know that. You know that if they knew that they had Vulcanite and this much, and this much that they would, they would, uh, even you, if you had, you know, like... I wouldn't have told my buddy. Right. Yeah. Like, it would, it's... Yeah. yeah it's highly sought after, and it would be considered uh, very beneficial. What she said was the truth. Yeah. She seems like she's telling you the truth. Um, Pindar's the one that told you that, by the way. Yeah. You know, okay. The council knew nothing oh, about the Vulcanite. Goodness, you never okay. mentioned it to him. But, anyway. None of their business. So. <laughs> and I've got ten more if you want them. None of they. Ten more? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, You'll pull them all out. And, and it's about 45 million gold on the black market or 90, 90 million retail. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, I will give you guys, um, because you're. Um, They're all standing around the whole party, you know, like the barbarian, the dumb one, he's standing there. He's like, 
Seth Gavor Seth. is like Seth sitting on the like floor. At, at Seth and Ren and say because you all are friends of family, um, I will give you full price on them. If you went black market, it would only be about forty five million. Um, so that's like what? Gavor's goes like that. Timmy's like Ren will nod her head. I yeah. will. Timmy looks a doll. But I <laughs> request that you do not go telling anyone that you brought this here, that I have it, or that I paid you for it. Timmy goes, no problem, man. No problem. Do I have everyone's word? Yes. And Cara just like... And she'll look at each and every one of them in the eye. So... So that she remembers who all is there. When you when you look at Zumbar, you see, like, <laughs> no... Blame. Yeah, it's just blank. He's just kind of looking like confused. Watching Zumbar. Okay. He just looks barbarian. We're in a magic shop. She's. He just looks confused. Um, Hey Zumbar. Hmm. Can you keep this a secret to protect your friends? Ren will. Thank you. Ren will lean real close to Lily across the desk and whisper in her ear. You see a woman who is standing next to Ren, who looks pretty intelligent. Um, you th- you think she's a magic user or or some kind of caster when you look at her, um, and she says, "So we have brought these here. I am Zen, by the way. It's a pleasure to meet you." Hello, sir. I am a warlock of the cat lord. That is very nice to make your acquaintance. And you as well. Uh, so, I can think of no better place than here uh, to have sold this. I'm not sure how, if they're aware, uh, but the links will keep our secret. And she nods at you. Of course. Uh, I suggest we do all of our dealings with her from now on. Very magic shop was, uh, I was placed with this very magic shop by Bliss Damien himself. She smiles when you say that. Well, all of cat kind is welcome and protected. Always, you're all welcome. Timmy's like, so does that, so does that mean we're, like, all... Independently wealthy now? Is that what this means? That's exactly what that Fuck means. yeah! He starts bouncing up and down, hands up in the air. Yeah, I'm rich! I'm rich! You see Clip kind of look over as he's talking to Pinder, like. If you all would like to um, pick whatever items you would need from here, uh, Bella can subtract that amount from your cut. She can give you the rest and bank markers, if that is okay. Does anybody prefer to have silver? Go Borgles. It would be very difficult to carry that. Okay. Mm. okay. So markers would do fine. She'll pay the rest of you out in markers, and then we'll call it even. Just make sure you settle with her before you leave. Timmy's um, just kind of standing there with his mouth open still, just like... So how many ways are we cutting the 90 million? So that Bella, people are Bella's aware of what she's doing. There's ten of us, right? There's ten. There's ten of you, but Zen, she speaks up. She says, I was not the, there when this took place, so... Well, I don't think that's right. You're still part of the party, and you've helped us more than anybody else could. She look at them. I agree. That's she bad. smiles, and she goes, well, blessings to the Catholic. And since you're cat, uh, part of the cat lord, then you definitely get something. You look around, you see Kit. She's already over there shopping. She's got a bunch of stuff in her hands. She's like picked up a bunch of stuff and she's looking around. Let me <clears throat> say, um, I need protection. I need something. 
so I can't wear heavy armor or anything like that. I was really able to let Team Bell, uh, Rabbit is just talking. Yeah, what's up? Come help, please. Okay, I'll be there in a minute. <laughs> Seth, just make sure he grabs that eye patch. You go over there and it's sitting there, yeah. Put that on the counter. Okay. I'll start looking at weapons, I guess. Okay. She'll reach out and touch her arms. Yeah. Not to interrupt you, but... Rabbit is on his way. I know nothing of... <laughs> what, what is in the store. Um, no worries. Help. Let me, um... Let me make some tea. Would anybody like tea? Is there <gasps> hungry? Yes! Do you have a tea set for sale? The rabbit will be here in just a moment. A few, few seconds later, Rabbit walks in the front door and he's hey, hey, Clip. Hers got smashed, remember? Yep. She walked in her room with her tea he, set. was completely smashed. He, and Seth's like, do you have plate mail that she can wear? I can't wear plate mail. Jorge okay. and I will um, go and like prepare not. some food. And I'm sure you kids are hungry, yeah? Yes. We'll be back in a minute. Mm. Seth's like, I'm always hungry. Gorgane Gorg Gorg goes it. over and grabs the chest, <laughs> oh, yeah. picks it up, and takes it in the back room with you guys. He puts the other tin into the chest that sets it down, and he picks it up and carries it out. Is she uh, noticeably pregnant yet? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Slightly. Just, slightly. Just, little bitty bump. Yeah, little bitty bump up. Rabbit comes up to you. He's like, uh, yeah. Uh, Ninety million. Okay. Uh, silver. Okay. Silver, not gold. <clears throat> yeah. Gold's not. We're just used to saying gold. Yeah, right. And silver. I caught it as I was about yeah, to say silver. it. Silver. Yeah, Ninety million silver. Yeah. Um, he's like, okay, no problem. I got you, guys. If you need help uh, with anything, just let me know. I walk up to him. I need something for protection. Okay. Um, and I also need. I know this is gonna sound weird, but do you have like a tea set? We do. Yeah? We do. We've got some uh, Eastern tea sets. He starts taking you over to this section over here. Okay. And uh, starts pulling out some drawers and stuff and pulls out these tea sets. And he's like, you can choose from any of these. She'll look at them all. Yeah, they're all really, really nice. Um, most of them are new. You okay. do see one set that's so old that it has, it, it's been repaired, looks like. And you can see gold and silver and platinum inside of the tea set where it had cracked and broke but it was repaired with gold and silver and platinum. She'll pick one of the teacups up and look at it. It's really great craftsmanship. All of it, the creation of it at the yeah. beginning and the repair of it. Really nice. Really unique. She'll pick that. Okay. She'll pick the old one. Okay. And then she'll look at it. I need like protection of some kind. I can't wear heavy armor. Um, I don't really know what I'm looking for. Just something. Well, we have some cloaks and we have some rings. Okay, yeah. Uh, we better. have some bracers. I don't know if you can wear bracers, but um, anyway. Here, I'll, I'll show you. Come this way. He okay. walks over and starts showing you. So, they have a cloak of displacement. Mm -hmm. That. They have cloaks of protection. They have rings of protection. Okay. Um, so, this is going to take some figuring to figure all this out. Um, and currently, uh, Rabbit would say to you, currently we do not have uh, that many markers here. So, we, we can get them. That's no problem. Um, Actually, we might uh, might have some personal, but we have some personal markers we could probably use in the meantime. I'll just replace it or whatever. Um, but anyway, so he he shows you a, a cloak of protection okay. and rings of protection and displacement cloak. Okay. The cloaks are plus three armor class, plus three saves, both. Okay. The rings are the same. Okay. And the cloak of displacement is plus two armor class with one displacement shot. The cloak of displacement. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Are you kidding? So keep track of all of the things that you're getting and then we'll, I'll tell you the amount later. Um, That's it. 
Okay. That's all she wants? Mm hmm Okay. So... I'll let everybody else go before I do Eden. It's about 200,000 gold. Okay. You can, write, <laughs> you can write that down? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, silver. Sorry. Not gold. Silver. About 200,000 silver. Oh, um, actually a bag of folding, too. How much would a bag of folding be to put her tea set in? Uh, 50,000 silver. Okay. So about 250,000 silver. That's silver. what she'll do. She needs a <clears throat> bag of holding. I think you guys set. are all going to get around, what, 900,000 or so? I don't have a calculator, um, but... I don't either. It's okay. I'm here. 90 million... Yeah, I did it. 90 million silver minus... Yeah, you're going to have so much money. I'm sorry. I was thinking 9. 90. Uh, of course it's 9. Yeah. 90 million divided by 10? Yeah. Uh, 9 million. Okay. Duh. Yeah, I'm like... Duh. Oh, we're not even stoked. Right. <laughs> 90 million divided by 10 Five. is 9 million. So you'll have like so 8... Eight million, you know. I can do math in my head, but then for some reason, when we're playing D and D and we get on yeah, camera, my brain goes. Yeah. Like yeah. I have to count on my fingers how many glasses um, to add to my hit to hit. It's ridiculous. So any weapon type that you would like, just normal magical weapons. There's plus three, is is the best you're gonna find as far as just straight laced. But they have some specific weapons that are. Um, unique weapons and things like that that will be much more expensive. Like? Um, for the swords, you're going to look at 60,000 gold for a plus three. Any any magical weapon, 60,000 silver for a plus three of any type of magical weapon. Um, specialized, they have uh, blades that will flame. They'll catch fire. Mm -hmm. Flame flame blades. Um they have uh, armor blades, which will you can. They have blades that you can use that will help your armor class or help to hit one or the other. And those are plus three as well. So like you could put plus three to your armor class one round, and then the next round you could do plus three to hit, or you could divide it up plus one to hit, plus two armor class, whatever. Mm -hmm. Those are going to be 70,000. Um, there's no intelligent blades or anything like that here. There are some plus three sharpness, plus three wounding, plus three vorpals that are here. Um, the vorpals are all going to be a katana. There are no normal blades. Like if you are proficient with the katana, you know, that kind of thing. All those blades are katanas that are here. Eden's going to see if they have any bastard swords. They do. Yeah. They do. What about scourge? Scourge? They do. Plus three. On both those. Plus three? Yeah. Okay. Kara's asking, hey, what's a warple? Is the blade that Zumbar showed her and Kara, is that in here? No. No? Okay. Are no. there any special hats? There are. There's witches hats, there's pirate hats, there's um witches hat? There is a witch's hat. What does it look like? It is purple. <laughs> it's right there. Oh purple goes with blue, I guess. You can change the color can of I it. Pick it up and put it on? Okay. You get one bonus spell per level spell that you can cast. So if you can cast first and second, you'll get an extra first and an extra second when this is on your head. Nice. If it, it, and it progresses. So once you get third level spells, it'll give you an extra third level as well. Awesome. <clears throat> and that... Seventy thousand silver for that. 
then how much was the bag of holding? Uh, 50,000 silver, is that what I said? Yeah, 50,000. And then you said there was a ring that gives three to armor class? Yep. Does it do saves as well? Yes. I'd like that too. Okay. How much was that? 60. What were those bracers? And then how much for the scourge? Oh, sorry. That's okay. Uh, 60. 60? Yeah. So, with, uh, the bracers, the best they have, will take your armor class at a base 2 starting off instead of a base 10. So to do 8 points. Okay. But um, you cannot wear it with leather armor. It won't work together. And you can wear it with rings, you can wear it with cloaks, but you can't wear it with armor. So do they have any leather armor? Here? They do. They have plus 3 leather armor. They also have plus three studded leather armor, which is uh, three, four, five, six, seven AC off your or added to your AC, I believe. Let me pull it up real quick, and I'll tell you. They have any black and silver leather armor? Black and silver? You know what I'm going for. Uh, let's see. Roll personal dice. Sure. Um, five. Yes, they do. What's the? Is it plus three or? It is. Three? How much? Shopping trip. We're not going to make this a shopping episode. We'll be quick. That's so, fair. yeah, she's only got one more thing. 80,000 silver for that armor. Okay. Just a plain leather bag. Okay. Put the, the vulcanite that has her fingerprints in it that she's got, something to put that in to attach to her belt so that when she's casting if she can just like use like a finger to kind of control two silver two silver okay anyway what do those backpacks do so they have several backpacks uh -huh. um they're all of them are two silver pieces except for one and it has 200 silver pieces on it can you zoom out for me? So I can see. Um, sorry, they have two. Um, one is a large backpack and one is a small backpack. Uh, the small backpack is 30,000 gold pieces. And a large backpack is 200 silver pieces, or 30,000 silver pieces, two, 200 silver pieces. The others are uh, two silver pieces, the normal ones. The, the big one, or the little one that you see, has a symbol of gold star on the front of it. I'm sorry, a symbol of gold dar on the front of it. Really nice leather, um, embroidered. Rabbit will tell you that that's a uh, backpack of holding. So I can stop hauling all this stuff around in the great big backpack and... Yeah, it should hold quite a bit. It holds more than the bag of holdings. Um, the person that sold it to us uh, requested the price to, for it to be sold at what, what it's at right now. Which we don't normally do that, but he's a nice guy. We would have probably sold that thing for a lot more than that. That's the small one, right? Yeah, okay. Cool. And Rabbit says, you know, and if you guys decide 
if you want we can leave a tab here for you guys like if you want to that's fine you can come and pick up anything and leave a certain amount here with us and we'll, we'll give you the markers for the rest Brian, I'll look in and say, yeah, I'd like to do that. Um, 100,000? Okay, all right. Yeah. He was going to do 2 mil. What? Okay. <laughs> let's just giggle, she'll say, let's just do that. 2 million? Just in case. Okay. How much was that Warple Katana? katana? Two hundred and fifty thousand silver. Are there any calico cats in here? No. 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 Oops. No, ma'am. I don't. Hmm. That's weird. There's a white one, right here. There's a black one right there. A black one up here. Not that you see anyway. You you look around. I mean. Yeah. So there's a balcony if you want to go up there. It looks like. Yeah. Okay. She'll go up there. It looks like a place to sit down, and there's beautiful stained glass. And as you go up, there's a calico Lily cat. Lily said she was coming back with tea anyway. Yeah. So. There's a calico cat sitting on the table right there when you walk up. She'll sit down. Okay. And you said there were bows in here last time. There are. Take a look at the bows. Okay. Um, you sit down. The cat's like licking its paw. Looks up at you. Mm -hmm. Just curious. Mm -hmm. Not that she wanted to do it because she's curious. It doesn't come to you like the other cats did. It's just... Like it hasn't even reacted. Mm. Weird. You sit down? Yeah. Okay. Like right here? Yeah. Really nice furniture. She'll just chill. Okay. Wait for everybody to be done. All right. Uh, Zumbar comes up and sits down with you. Does he? Yeah. With Ren? Nice. Yeah. He sits on the couch. Hi. All right. Food? She bring food. That's hungry. What she said. Zimbabwe hungry. That's what she said. I'm not sure she'll be back out in a minute. Right. Um, a few moments later, Lily will come out with Rabbit and Gorgain, uh, and they'll bring food. Uh, they take it up here to this place up here where Ren's at and Zumbar's at and set it down. When they walk up, the cat jumps off the table and uh, goes over to the window ledge over here and sits down. Gordon smiles at you and he's like, Lily had said that you all were hungry and he starts putting the food on. Thank you. Rabbit comes up to Lily as you're coming in with the tea and everything and he looks at you and he's like, Use my personal one. Okay. He nods. <laughs> and then, obviously, I'm not selling. She'll switch to telepathy. Yeah, of course not. Obviously, we're not selling this. This is gonna go to make us. You, you're. I'm sure you're aware, but this is probably stolen. I don't think that it's stolen. But, also don't want to give anybody the opportunity to act like it might have been. I think that Pendar gave it to these kids for payment. For should, should I lock the door? Yeah. <laughs> he gets up and runs <laughs> over. He goes over to the front door and locks it. You see Clip kind of look at him funny when he does it and then looks back over at you. And uh, Pindar and Clip come walking up. 
Pindar's like, so we have been uh, ordered to meet with the monarch uh, in Rose End. So when you are all done, I would hate to keep the princess waiting. Well, the general, I should say. General Reva. I'm ready whenever they are. Morgan mm. kind of looks at him when he says that. Are you going to work for Reva? She requested a, a group, I guess. She look at Pendar. Yes, uh, the council has sent us, has sent them to war, uh, to the front lines. Kind of weird, but... They're supposed to be meeting with General Reva. The council is sending children? Well, I suppose they are a little older than children, but, um, yes, to us they would be children. It does. There's a lot, he says in your head, there's a lot that just happened. Reva has no mercy. I know. I'm hoping that I can speak to her and let her know, well, that he is there. Hmm. But I'm not sure if we should say much to her. The Prince of Catkind is going to be sent to the front line. It seems to be odd. He has the necklace, but it seems he's already used one life. I'm not sure why the Lord of Cats requested that you give it to him, but he used one already. It's not supposed to happen that way, Pindar. If he goes to the front lines and he uses all of his lives, the entire continent will pay the price. Or the next prince or princess will have to take over. It is not for my place to know what the Lord of Cats wishes, but, you know, they are all chosen ones. The necklace can be put on any prince that's born in the ninth cycle. There are more of those here on the plains, so. Including the one responsible for the nexus to begin with. Not as dire straits as it might seem. Yes. And I'm sure, if asked, she would do it again, but um, I'm sure that the Cathar would like to keep Eras out of that. So would I. You know, it's... Ryan's just sitting there a little, like, aware that there's telepathy going on around her. Yeah. But I do feel a tiny bit of responsibility, so, um, not to be rude, but can I just a moment. Of course. He gets up and walks back over to Cliff. She's just going to walk down the stairs. As she walks down the stairs, she is going to um, try and telepathy Glistinian, see if he's on this plane. Okay. Dear friend. How are you? There have been others that have used lives prior to when they should have. Fate deems it necessary, then fate deems it necessary. I suppose his path is chosen by fate itself and not by cat kind. I have no control over such things, but I do know that he is where he is supposed to be currently. Whether or not that means he will use more than lives than he should, I do not know. I do not look into that for obvious reasons. 
I do know that he is unable to be found currently, which is good because they are looking for him, those from another world. And they carry with them an evil blade from Greyhawk. Grey Razor seeks his soul for whatever purpose, I cannot tell you. But I do suspect it is maneuvering from the gods that do not belong here. Some would say I don't belong here. Some would say you do. Mm. Of course, my dear. Report finished. Go about your beautiful day, my lord. It is good to hear from you again. I hope that your pregnancy goes well. If you require any assistance, let me know. Me too. Thank you. She'll go back up into now. He says, as you disconnect, he reconnects, and he says, there are servants of beings from other places here now that should not be connected to that pyramid? Oh no. No. Politics from other worlds attempting to capture what power they can here. maneuvering by forces greater even than I. I have requested that an avatar of love and beauty come here to start the religion over again, and I am waiting to find out if that will take place. So far, nothing has happened, but it would seem that they will soon have no choice. Well, I await the day. As do I. Mm. You have a good day, Lily. You guys are eating, uh, the two of you are eating. I don't know if anybody else goes up and eats. Uh, Gavor is uh, looking around the shop. Timmy is, uh, hasn't gotten anything yet, but he's look, he's like looking everywhere at everything. Uh, and asking, asking uh, Rabbit what the prices are on all this stuff. I got you. He's so excited he can't choose anything. Kinda, yeah, that's the way that it seems. Okay. She'll go up. Alright. Did you find anything? You did. What are you... Are you having... What's going on? <laughs> um, I, I, there's so much. I don't know what... So... He puts this cloak on. He's like, what do you think? What does it do? It's really nice. It's purple velvet. He's like, what do you think? What does it do? I don't know. <laughs> it looks good, though, doesn't it? Seth's looking at armor over there. Maybe I should get some leather armor. Yeah. <laughs> he comes over to where you're at. And he's like, hey, man. This is cool. Yeah. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> armor. Mm hmm. Armor would be a good idea. Stand up and come down. Okay. Go ahead. Gorgane nods at you when you leave. Thank you for the food. Yeah. I guess. I guess so. I guess I should have some armor. Which one should I get? Would you 
wear. This, <laughs> he's, uh, he's got normal brown leather, you know. <clears throat> Show him some of the leather armor. Okay, he starts looking at it all, and he's like, yeah. Car's getting some studded leather, so. Oh, yeah? Because that's what she wears. Okay. It's not yellow like hers, but. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what to get. I saw these cubes over there. I don't know what they do. Cubes. Yeah. So, how about a bag of holding to put your stuff in? Okay. Um, some studded leather armor. Is this doll? Or Delara? Okay. Sounds like a really good idea. How about one of these rings? It makes it harder for people to hurt you. Okay. Oh, that is a good idea. Like I saw these boots over there. They look pretty cool. We need some new boots and a cloak. Okay. What do the boots do? I don't know. I don't know what any of this does. He says. She'll turn and look for rabbit. You see him over helping Gavor right now, um, over in this area right here. Let's just take it a step at a time. When Rabbit's done helping Gavor, we'll have him help us. Okay. What about Bella? And he points over there and. She's just standing at the desk and she's got markers out. She's she doing like paperwork. She's counting markers. No, I don't want to interrupt her then. Um, so. Lily's up here with Gorgane and Zumbar. Oh, I didn't realize Lily was still up there. Yeah, she kind of standing off to the side, looking out the window and nodding. She didn't like talk to you or anything. Okay. I'll wait, I'll wait till Rabbit's done. I thought of one other thing. Use a bow? No. I use daggers. What about that dagger that Short you sword. wanted? Oh, yeah. Remember? Yeah. He goes running over to the case. I want this, and can I have those? And he points at the this bandolier of daggers. And he's like, I want those. Can I have those? Cool. He picks them up. Asking like he needs to ask. <laughs> right. He starts gathering the things that you suggest that he gathers, and then he gathers that dagger, and he gathers a bandolier of daggers, a cloak, a ring, and some boots. Um, Gavor walks over here and starts looking at these necklaces and crowns that are sitting over here. Ran all telepathy, Gavor, and okay. be like. Looks like you can have gold for dinner now. Smile. <laughs> it does indeed. I wonder if they would be interested. <laughs> you said the ring of protections are plus three. Yeah, and that's on armor class and saving throws. Is Rabbit still helping Gavor? Is he with him? No, no. He comes over to you guys to help you. She'll look at Rabbit and say, just real quick, do you have anything that would allow me to teleport? Uh, we have a helmet. We also have uh, some hats. Um, we might have some rings that it could be stored into. Um, and then... see we have scrolls um, we have staffs that have a minute um, okay. let's see what else do we have yeah she'll say no she'll be like um no worries, it's okay. And let, she'll, uh, let me go look at my list and, and see. Okay. She'll go back up there where Lily is. Okay. Wait for Lily to be done doing whatever she's doing. Yeah, uh, she down. seems to be. She she's sitting next to Gorgain right now, and uh, Gorgain's talking to Zumbar. She'll just sit up there and wait. Okay. Right across from that small bag of holding. 
or a backpack of folding. What is that? Is that a thief's kit? You look at it and you see it's a vampire hunting kit. Oh. It does have a gun in it, and there are firearms in here for sale. Um. Kind of zoom around here so you can take a look. I did want to look at the bows. You want to look at the bows? bows so, the best bow that they have is an elven bow mm -hmm. uh, plus four. Ooh. And the arrows are plus three. Um, and they seem to have quite a few arrows. The other bows are all plus threes. Um, the elven bow. When you look at it, you're not. It, it. Do you have a bow? Yes. So it's made differently than your bow. It, it looks strange. It's not. It's got a couple uh, offshoots from where the string attaches to. Mm -hmm. It's got one and then another that's beyond that, and it's attached to both of them. Um, that bow in particular, that plus four. You, it was crafted by an archer, which means that you can use your strength to hit. Um, with that bow, and your damage to hit with that bow. He's not towards anybody. He's just like towards the wall and just kind of pulls back the, the string. It. Uh, you realize it would use your strength, like you could use your strength to fire this bow instead of just your dexterity. But you get your dexterity too. You get both. Yeah. That's badass. Mm hmm. Crafted by an archer. Delia yeah, had one of those for a while. Yeah. In the beginning, before uh -huh. she started using it. Yeah. And it's plus four. It's the nicest bow there. Um, 500,000 silver pieces for that bow. So when Rabbit is done with um, Gavor, she'll ask him to. Okay. all of those things and then she wants to get them both new boots too it's just her life she didn't have boots either okay so they have <clears throat> two pairs of boots that are here um and one looks like you would wear it in really cold climates like they're furry barbarian looking type boots mm -hmm. um and the others look uh, tight fitting. And they go up to almost to the uh, knee. Um, the tight fitting ones, they, they look more feminine than the other ones. Check them out. Okay. Uh, you put them on and you feel like you're a little more dexterous than you were when you put them on. You walk around a little bit. Yeah, they would add one to your dexterity. Oh goodness. Yeah, oh. permanently while you had them on. Well, these look like they're for a girl, so. Uh, Rabbit looks at him. He's like, "Yeah, they they'll change depending on who puts them on." The last time they were wore was by a girl. Oh. Huh. Okay. A boy puts them on, they can change. They'll look different. And Timmy goes, well, I was going to get these, but they're a little big. They look a little big. Do those change too? He's like, no. No. Well, you, you actually need She'll take them off and give them to him. She's like, you actually need these. I do? You do. Okay. You understand. He puts them on and they and they uh, they change. They, they When he puts them on, they look a little bit more masculine. And they go all the way up above the knee. It's like the, the leather itself just transforms and changes. And he's like, whoa. Kind of end up looking like somewhat like pirate boots. High pirate boots. He's like, these are nice, man. Uh... There's a pair of slippers there too, and a pair of sandals. Uh, Ra uh, Rabbit tells you that the uh, the slippers will allow you to dance. 
Like they help you with dancing. What about the sandals? He goes, I believe that those enable you to travel. Can I try them on? Quick. Yeah. yeah. Should put them on. So when going long distances, it halves the time of travel with these sandals on. So like if you go 10 miles, it's only five miles as far as your physical constitution and everything like that goes. Plus three. Plus three. They have plus one, two, and three. Cool. And you can buy as many as you want. Um, so she's sitting up there with Lily, Rannis? Yeah, Gorgane, too. And Gorgane looks over at somebody and says, come, come on, come with me. And he's like, won't work. And he grabs part of the food and a uh, little tiny teacup. Rana look at Gorgane and He looks at you like you're dumb. He's like, raises an eyebrow. He goes, I know. It's okay. I got it. You're so cute, he says, and turns and walks off. She's like worried. You can tell she's worried yeah. about him breaking yeah. everything. Zumbar place. doesn't seem to be, like, nothing magical has happened. Gotcha. You understand? So like, it all looks just like normal shit so far. Okay. Except for the boots, which he wasn't down there when that was going on. Okay. Anyway, Gorgane takes him over. Uh, to where the firearms are and starts showing them to him. And he's like, mm. Jesus Christ. <sighs> so you said you don't go sit on it? Yes. What's it like? <laughs> Annoying. You hear the cat say. It's looking outside. Calico? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't turn around like it's just a male voice. He goes, Annoying. She keeps looking over at the cat. Still looking out the window. That's Calico. Raise an eyebrow. Lily, can you have Rabbit open the door? I gotta go to the bathroom. And you see the cat go down the stairs. Start heading to the door. He'll go and open the door for the cat. It goes outside. And rabbit kind of looks around and closes it again. So, did Pendler see your legs? That's so cool. That's so cool. I feel the same way. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It did. It changed my entire life. When Rabbit's not busy. Uh huh. Um, he locks the door and kind of turns back around. Seth, Seth was going to ask him, is there anything? Kind of nods over at Pendar and says, um, "He disappears real easy when it comes to shadows and stuff like that. Is there anything like that?" That's. I don't. We don't have anything like that, but I know Lily does. Maybe she's interested in selling it. I don't know. Let me ask her. He goes walking off. That's what I was Give me a told us that I had. That's where like, this is uh, Zumbar thing. and uh, uh, Gorgane are standing. The two barbarians are standing, and he's showing him these guns. Oh, there's a there. Yeah, there's Wakazashi and a couple Wakazashis and a couple katanas and this hammer. That's something that Kara doesn't have. And the hammer is wooden, and on the side of it, it says babysitter. On the side of it. <laughs> He's following car. Okay. Around, of course. All right. Uh, Lily, you're upstairs talking to Ren, and Rabbit comes up. He's like, "Hey, Ren, that." Uh, Ren just told her that she was cat. Yeah. yeah. Say, like, hey. Uh, he was asking about elven cloak and boots. We don't have any, but I know you had some. I don't know if you still use them and want to put them out or. Yeah, yeah. I don't. No, I haven't. They're yeah, antiques, I man. I know those are hard to come by. I haven't used them for years. Yeah. 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 I haven't seen um, any in years. <laughs> Pendar's got some. Uh, he looks over at Pendar. He's like, "Yeah, and um, I think Zira has a matching set." Does she? she? You know what? I haven't seen Zira actually. 
I haven't either. Um, <coughs> pregnancy hormones. You should probably tell her. Fuck. Fuck. Or um, Gordon. I haven't seen him either. Yeah, let me run to my room and grab it real quick. It's grab. just with my stuff. What? The Elvin Cook movies. Oh, you have some? Yeah. You want to sell them to him? Yeah. How much? You okay. Well, they're, an, they're, an, they're antique, so that automatically is like 2,000% markup. And I don't know what they would be new, because they haven't been new, you know, I don't know. I don't even remember what we paid A million gold? Like, or a million silver, he says? Yeah? Fair, yeah? Okay. I'll go tell him. He comes walking back up to you. He's like, so... Man, those are antiques. We don't. We've never had any of those. But Lily has a pair of, of boots and cloak uh, that she's willing to sell for a million. So, okay, I think she's gonna go get them here. Soon. So, you go back to get them, or you start. First, she okay. is going to look at Ren though, okay. and she is going to um, ask her what. Hiding the prints. Not detected. Nobody can scry within 60 feet. Or, exactly. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. That would be a cat. And you're... Never leave your brother's side. Yeah. If he lives long enough to use the necklace. Yeah. He's crazy. It's really hard. He usually listens to me. So that's good. But he's a live wire. And then, I don't know, like some things happen and he's just acting different. I think we need to get him. I forget him a spell or something. I don't know. He's a little crazier than usual. Do you need to have him a toe? Yeah, I think so. I think so. It's a... Uh, Is she allowed to talk about it? No? Huh? Is she allowed to talk about any of the shit that's happened to her? Nobody's told her otherwise, right? No. No. She'll say to her, they, um, I don't know who, but somebody, like, tried to have me framed for killing someone. And, like, I would never do something like that, and I think it's because of me. I think they're trying to separate. I know you have stuff to do. I'm sorry. The things that I have to do are um, tend to cat kind. <laughs> what? Oh, you're just start. saying he's heading up. Oh, he starts walking. He's hungry. You yeah. see Kit walk up in front of you and she just throws a bunch of shit on the desk like it's a pile of shit. And you see Zumbar walk up with a big blunder bus and just smiles at you. He's like, whoa. Boomstick. Boomstick. Oh. Nice. You see Gorgane behind him. He's like, I showed him how to use it. Nice. You got extra rounds? I do. We'll get all that taken care of for him. And he holds up this little satchel. He's like, I didn't, I don't know how much the arrows are. So, the plus three. Yeah. I got 50. I don't know. You'll have to ask him. You know. I'll need to find something to wrap the heads so that they don't bust through the pack. Because mm. I don't have a quiver that will hold that many. Mm. I'm sure I'm sure they've got something. I don't know what he says. I guess I can ask Rabbit. Yeah, ask him, he says. So right. He'll know. So Lily will snap her fingers and summon a servant. Okay. Um, that looks like a black cat. Okay. Yes, it would look like a black cat when she summons it, but then she would have it turn into an elf. Okay. You see some bargo. Oh, I thought he was downstairs. Oh, he is. He is. Yeah, you're okay. upstairs. You're up yeah, in the balcony? Yeah, yeah. All right, you're up here on the balcony. Okay. All right. 
Ren could have grabbed a hold of that situation, but it's okay. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell it to uh, invisibly go to my room, get my all the cooking boots, and bring them back to me. You see Stay it. invisible the whole time. You see it disappear. It starts to go down the stairs and just... Elf disappears. Seth comes walking up the stairs as you're talking. What I'm supposed to be doing and where I'm supposed to be at. And as she finished that sentence, she looks lefty, tuffy, tuffy. Yeah. I need a... <laughs> She's just going to bring all the old characters. I need an can. atonement for the chosen one, please. Are you busy at the moment? No, I'm not busy. Um, but I cannot do that. I'm sorry. Why well, not? Because he's where he's supposed to be or on the way there. According to Glistinian. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I get, I, yeah, I'm sorry. You're good. I get it. Yeah. Mm, all right. Supposed yeah. to be true neutral, I think. As far as my studies and research go, that's what I've learned. And he's pretty close, from what I hear. <laughs> After Red just telling her that he's getting harder to deal with. His sister is sitting here telling me that he is getting really hard to deal with and that she's worried that, you know. True neutral. Yeah. He says to you. Okay. Yeah. They're all fucking hard to deal with. Air is fucking drives me crazy sometimes. Yeah. Anyway. Bailey has been hanging out with her. They, they've been up here off and on. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I think Lord of Cats is trying to convert a puppy dog. Well, good. At yeah. least she's not fucking killing half of the planet with her sister. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> huh? Something, something I should know. Yeah, Queensland is going to war against the Danitarium and then probably the rest uh, of the damn continent. Who knows? Well, I know they're going to war against the Danitarium. Yeah, I know. I know. That's kind of crazy. I don't know what to do about that. I'm just kind of trying to stay in my lane. I feel that. Uh -huh. Is Pendar still down there talking to Clip? Yeah. Okay. So he's not rushed them. Yeah. They're they're kind of relaxing now. You know, Clip's kind of looking around, watching what's going on. All right. I got a full house, Tuffy. Thank you. No problem. No problem. He makes it halfway up the stairs, turns yeah. around, and goes back to that hammer. Okay. Walks over to the hammer. How much, they, how much they want for it? Uh, Why don't you want your kids in a candy store? It's a wooden, Princess it's a Lily. wooden ha it's a wooden hammer, and it looks like um, a hundred and sixty thousand silver for the hammer. It says babysitter on it. And it says babysitter on it. Heavy. Uh, you lean down and pick it up. Mm -hmm. No, fucking light, really light. Um, definitely magical when you pick it up. You realize it's light as fuck. Like, How long is it? Uh, it's it can be used as one-handed. Really? Yeah. All right, I'll put it with the rest of the stuff I'm buying. Okay. All right. She'll look at Willie and kind of jokingly, she'll be like, you know, with him and everything that's been going on, I've been thinking about trying to get like a shot collar or something for if he gets out of a certain oh range of me. So. That's a plus five <laughs> hammer. Well, it well, has well, a ten percent well, chance shit. to knock your opponent out with each strike. Thanks. You get to roll percentile every time. Every you time hit. you hit with it, you get to roll ten percentile dice to try to knock somebody out. That's amazing. Um, weapon. They get a save. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. um, yeah. So um, to ease your mind, I have spoken with. Glistinian's high priest, Tuffy. I don't know if you've met him yet, but he's... Do I know who that is? No. No? No. That's weird. She knows who everybody is. Oh, uh, this is Rin. Yeah. Make your roll. Yeah. Make your roll. Under your escort. Yep. Yeah, you know who he is. He's one of the heroes of the North. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. And I... the son of the banker. 
my dear old friend Tuffy is his high priest in the happy hunting grounds. Um, and I just spoke with him. He said that the Seth is exactly where he wants to be. If he is of a good alignment, he will not succeed against the great evil that he has to come up against. He must be of a truly neutral. So, roll under alignment at that time. Crit. It all clicks to you and you realize that your brother is the chosen one and has to go against the nexus. It just all clicks. It all just clicks head. to you. You're like, well, he finally said enough. Yeah. Oh. She didn't realize she didn't know. She thought he Yeah, and that's all she said. She wine. just goes, oh. Nobody really knows what's going on, it seems like, or the people that do don't want to give up the information. Like, there's several people, like, the sweet, the sweet Pandar down there. Like, he doesn't really tell us much. Um, it's probably and then, that he doesn't want to tell you, it's probably that he just doesn't really know. Right, and then I met this other cat kind, and he's just all, just as mysterious as can be. You remember that Lily? He was a guardian of Nerva and some other companions. He was at the meeting that you got invited to at Hookley's Manor, the one that has the pox all over his face. Mm -hmm. That's him. He was mysterious then too, but he's just super mysterious. And... She says he's cat kind and and he's not, he's he's the only one who's really told us anything like Substan like he was the one who told us to come here the first time. Um, he guided you to Yeah. Yeah. And what what nature of cat kind is he? Do I know that? Yeah. He's a leopard. Which you know is prophetic or betrayer, one or the other. Like you know you know there's a cat lord in another spear who's leopard. He's not panther, but he's the cat lord. I can tell you his smile makes me want to tuck my tail between my legs. <laughs> yeah, that's uh... And it's like he's everywhere too. It's so weird. Is very um, akin to panther energy. Yeah. And very much in alignment with glistening. Um, I know that he, in particular, was a protector of Nerva. Yeah. Like you realize. She doesn't know anything about Nerva. Yeah, right and now. she doesn't know if she's allowed to tell her. Right. That's council shit. Mm -hmm. She could get in big trouble for saying something. She could. Possibly. But, um, are you familiar with, with plane shifting? Yeah. Interplanar travel. Kind of. A little kind bit. Kind of, a little bit. Um, if you can figure out how to plane shift to the happy hunting grounds. He gets to left the lily, it's from Bay. Hey, fucking door's locked. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I have special guests. Hold on. Mmm. She saying? He goes, he, he, he asks you if he has any belts. He's like, yeah. He's like, uh, uh, what's it? Yeah, one second, he says. Yeah, go ahead. He goes towards the door. 
Right, er, Ryan will turn and look. He opens the door and you see the prince of Queensland, uh, Vaiman Sith, scimitars on, on a scimitar and a bastard sword and plate mail and it's all intricately carved with these angels rising up and made of vibranium the and um huh the monarch yeah the 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 emperor of the north you know that with your with your escort you would know you know who he is you know she who he is the whole party. guys that's the prince of queensland he comes in and starts look, looking at you guys. Seth has the same look I have. Lily will stand up and wave him. And Kara, of course, is... Up here, Vay. Up here. He kind of looks at Kara. She'll like... stiffen up. You feel me? She's yeah. relaxed talking yeah. to Lily. Like, yeah. she snaps into okay. her. Back he, into her. He comes over. Uh, I'll cry. He just kind of doesn't really pay attention Lily, to anybody. He just it, goes to Lily. Lily puts her hand on her knee before he gets there and says... The happy hunting grounds is Glistening's Point. It's where he lives and exists. And then she'll stand up okay. to greet me. Clip nods at him when he walks by, and Pindar salutes him. And um, he just walks straight up the stairs up to Lily. He's like, hey, hey you got a minute? What's up? Um, privately? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I can give you guys a minute. We'll, we'll go, we'll go into my room. Thank you. You're um, welcome. You're welcome. Prince? She'll nod her head. He nods at you. You realize he was unaffected by your looks, by your yeah, charisma. Yeah. He just, yeah. he just almost didn't even look at you. He takes you off into the other room. Lily, when you get in the back room, he's like, Jamal has imprisoned Gordon and Zira there in the Temple of Loving Madness. They were that thing that streaked across the sky, and I cannot get to them. I've been trying for two days. They're trapped. And Jamal is responsible. Which is why I accepted this war against the Danitarium. We will chase him as far as we need to. Are they alive? They are, but they weren't. They died. I don't know all the details, but whatever this barrier thing is around this temple, I cannot get through. I tried to get through it several ways. The knowledge that I've gained at this point is it's magic that can't be broken. Like, that's all I really know. It's dark druidic in nature and I owe her I promised her that I would fulfill that IOU and I can do nothing until that is done I have to get them out not to mention they're our friends but Raven knows you know I know that's it and Jamal and you're sure about Jamal? Positive. She told me. Who told you? Zira. I can take you to the glass where you can look through and speak with her, but... Oh, I need to see her. I absolutely I held it from you her. as long as I could. I figured I could take care of it, and I can't. Even a wish won't work. I tried. I need your help. They need your help. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let me get Gordon. Um, and um, let me let Heather know he's going to want to go too. All right. Um, Let's get the band back together and he smiles. Eris? Raven won't be joining us. Ares is with my sister in the happy hunting grounds. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. She's probably... Uh, actually, I don't know. these kids that are here now yeah. are going 
to be on the front lines with your sister. Um, and the boy out there is an integral part of the Stenians' plan and do not understand why they are being sent to the front lines with Rhaegar. She's going to get all of them killed. Who sent them there? The council. Well. There's... Okay. Pandora said that there was some major changes and some corruption going on in the council. Really? Um, Here? My guess is, is because you are very intimidating to people. That, uh, I haven't even been here. What are you talking about? I've done nothing. <clears throat> nothing. You've done nothing for the last Matter of fact, I... Years? Well, no, I have, but not here. I mean, I, I haven't been involved with the city politics. Matter of fact, I've ignored the city politics since we got here. I haven't been here. I Maybe it's time I should. I know that Pandar says that there was some corruption that had been hashed out, but he believes... I think he said there, he believes there's still more corruption. And I don't understand sending these... I mean, I know they're not children, but look at them. Yeah. The front lines of the Danitarium. That would be Road's End. That's where Rava is. Like, it's like they want them to die. Why would they want... Seth? So, Seth, who's that? He's a very important piece of Glistanian's plan. The boy. The boy. Okay. His sister, Ren. Yeah. That I was speaking to upstairs. The pretty one. They tried to frame her and put her in prison today. Who did? Someone within the council. He raises an eyebrow and goes, sounds like I'm missing out on a lot of fun. <laughs> if she gets separated from that boy, um, vile things are going to happen to that little boy. Uh, and Glistinian has charged us with at least keeping an eye on the situation. He didn't say anything to me about it. No. I wonder why. Well, I guess we should meet him then. I guess I should meet him. But we got to get Zira out. Th that's more important. It is. I think. I know. <laughs> Shut your mouth. I can't even. I so try not to bet a game. It's Let's, so uh, fucking... She's going to get the daughter um, in. Tell you what. She's terrified. Um, I'll take you to Zira and then we can come back and meet them or whatever and find out what. Or I'll tell the council to stop their shit or whatever. I don't know. I think I can do that. Are if you I, emperor or are you emperor? Well, I'm emperor of the north. I'm just a prince here, but I think I have, I think I could do, I think I can tell them what to do. I don't know. I don't know what the laws are here. Maybe I should go look into that. Maybe I should go talk to mom. Real quick. Yeah. Does it seem like Elis wanted them to get the monarch involved? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So she'll be waiting outside the door for okay. them to come back out. All right. Run well. All right. Um, um Yeah. Real quick conversations here, and them aren't going nowhere. Okay. Right. Let's do that. They step out, and uh, you see them walk back in. You guys, you got all your junk on the desk. You're finishing out the final shit. So, Rabbit went ahead and got you another belt. And the belt that he got you um, can become a rope and grab things. Like, you just... And you can, like, and climb with it and stuff like that. It's a rope, rope, uh, a rope of climbing or a rope of uh, grabbing, we'll call it. Um... So the prince and Lily walk out. and Right, before um, they walk out, she's going to telepathy the party and say, I'm going to get the monarch involved, guys, including Pendar. Let them all know. He kind of turns. He, look at Pendar, he turns and looks at you and he's like, he might not be the one you want involved. No. He is, he says this to everyone, he says, he is the Siamese of the Cat Lord, but he is more than that. So should we wait to speak to Reva about it? Get her involved? That's up to you. I don't know. They come walking out, and that's where we're going to stop this evening. Oh, my God. <laughs> they come walking out no. into the room. Um, Maybe and, cuss at you. Yeah, right. Right. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, 
What a game. Good game. Good game. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You guys. didn't let me to rethink my decision before yeah. I fuck we'll shit. We'll see up. what happens to give you a little time. So <laughs> guys, like, subscribe, share. Hit the ding ding. Punch punch the ding ding, all that shit. Um, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. We are Original Jim. We'll see you next week. Don't be scared The heroes are the monsters